up Caribou Kwetu? We are back with the last video in the Caribou Kwetu series and in this video I will basically just be going through how we planned our road trip and I'm going to say our traveling experience during the pandemic. So let's get started. Oh, by the way, if you've not watched the series, if this is the first video you're seeing in this series, I highly recommend that you watch the videos in this series. I will have them linked down below and then come back and maybe watch this video after that. So let's proceed with today's video. As you can see, I am not in my studio. I figured I am going to record this video where it all started and it was right on this floor. That's where the whole trip began. I think on the first video, the first clip I showed was sitting here packing our clothes to go to Tanzania. So we went, me and my two sisters, my two sisters, um, we left after Christmas and before leaving we had to take the COVID test, not the rapid test but the other one, I don't know what it's called, I have it on the screen. We had to take that 72 hours before we left and I believe we paid um, somewhere around 130, maybe 150 at the very most to take the test for each person. and. When coming back from Tanzania, we also had to take another COVID test and this time we paid 230,000 Tanzanian shillings and that's approximately $100. So in total, we might have paid $250 for us to do our COVID test for going and for coming back. <laughs> Now, in terms of the flight we took, we traveled with Ethiopian Airlines and first of all, we had expected that there will be at least, you know, one seat that is skipped when you're entering the plane, but that was not the case. The plane was packed to maximum capacity and luckily we were traveling the three of us. So the three seats, it was just the three of us, that was a good thing. But other than that, it was packed. It was really, really packed. And our flight was from Washington to Ethiopia, Addis Ababa, and that took about 13 hours. And then we had a layover for about, let's say, one hour that went by really fast. And then we were from Addis Ababa to Dar es Salaam, which was about two to three hours. And going back was much longer. We came from Dar es Salaam to Ethiopia and then Ethiopia to Brussels, I think. Brussels, Brussels, I think. Somewhere in Europe. And then we stayed there for like an hour on the flight. And then from there we traveled to Washington. So going back was definitely longer than going to Tanzania. For the planning of the trip, I made a list. I would say I was a planner of this trip. You know, my two sisters might disagree or agree, but I was a planner of this trip. So I made a list of the cities that we will be visiting and I also kept the dates and everything. And my cousin was going to be our designated driver and he did a great job. He drove to all the cities and those drives were long, well, those, those trips were long, but he did an amazing job of driving to all those cities. And some of those cities he's not been to, so it was a new experience for him. Anyways, um, I will have a screenshot somewhere on the screen of what our original Ratiba, what our original schedule was like. It will be somewhere here, but then we had to change it up because my cousin was not comfortable he had not driven to the south before so he preferred that to go to the south and then come back to the north so what we did is we went from dar to iringa iringa to dodoma dodoma to moshi moshi to tanga muheza and then we went back to dar and then we went back to zanzibar now 
now for the trip what we did is we spent at least one day in each city that's what we had allocated and then we spent we allocated one day for driving so we would say we left Dar on January 4th we spent January 5th in Iringa and then we left Iringa on January 6th so that's just basically how our schedule was like now let's talk about the duration of our travel and at the time that my cousin had to drive because he drove for a long long time from Dar to Iringa we took about 10 to 11 hours and then from Iringa to Dodoma was about five hours and then from Dodoma to Moshi we took about nine hours and then from Moshi to Tanga we took about seven to eight hours but that's because we are going um, up to Magoroto and that was just a whole different story altogether. And then from Tanga to Dar, it was about six hours, maybe less. And then from Dar to Zanzibar, we took a boat ride and that was about one and a half hours. Wow. When it's cold. And now for the activities that we did, in Iringa, we went to Ruaha National Park, which was something I really, really wanted to do for the longest time because that's the biggest national park in Tanzania. And then we also visited the Maasai Boma and all those videos, I have posted them on my channel, so just make sure you check them out. And then in Dodoma, we didn't do much. We were just on transit because Originally, we had planned to go to Mbeya, but then we chose not to go to Mbeya, so we ended up going to Dodoma, and then we spent the night there, and then the next day we went to Moshi, and in Moshi we went to Chemka Springs, really, really beautiful hot springs, but the roads are terrible, I don't know what the government is doing, and whoever the owner is, please make some signs that will direct the people to where Chemka Springs is, because we used Google Maps and we got lost and the roads are really bad, they're not good at all. So please, somebody work on that. And then from there we went to Muheza slash Tanga. I'm not sure if Magoroto is in Muheza or Tanga, but we went to Magoroto Forest and we spent a night there. We went camping, which I was not expected, but we spent a night there and then the next day we drove down and went to Tanga and then spent a night there and then we went to Dar and I think we spent two nights and then we took a boat to Zanzibar and in Zanzibar we did several activities. First of all when we got there we arrived or in the morning and then that afternoon we went to do water sports. We did the banana boat we did the ringos and we did the jet skiing. I've always wanted to do the jet skiing, so I was happy we did that. And then on the second day, my sisters and other people and my cousin and all of the people who were in the trip with us decided to go to the caves. I'm not sure what the caves are called, but I will have them on the screen. So they went to the caves and then I decided to go to prison island because i've wanted to go to prison island the first time i was in zanzibar i didn't go so this time i wanted to go so i went to prison island and i also went to the tortoise farm which is in prison island as well and then after that i took the boat i took the boat from stone town to prison island and then sight so and then i took the same boat from prison island to sandbanks which is just it's a, it's a sandbank i think a lot of people go there for picnics i would have loved if we had gone there for picnic but by the time i went to sandbank the waters were already closing up and it was getting really windy and people were starting to leave so basically that is what we did in the cities that we visited <laughs> Now, the expenses that we incurred during this trip, the fact that we were three, I would say we are three because we are the ones who wanted to go for the trip and then we, bear, we asked my cousin who willingly volunteered to take his time off, bless his heart, and come with us on this trip. 
so our expenses were divided and then made it definitely cheaper we took my cousin's car and i would say to fill up his tank was about 100,000 Tanzanian shillings but it might have been less and would fill up the tank each time we travel so for one trip from one city to another we'll either fill up the tank once or twice at the very most and then in terms of transportation the only place we didn't go with my cousin's car was in Dar es Salaam and we rented a van which was able to carry seven people I think we were seven in total and that cost us 100,000 Tanzanian shillings for the two days that we're there now in terms of accommodation we stayed at some amazing hotels Yani, we we stayed at the hotels that were really nice first of all what we did is not planned beforehand what hotel we're going to stay at so on the way to a particular city we'll start um, looking on google for hotels to stay um, in Iringa we stayed at the Sunset Hotel and we came across it on Google as well I think one of my other cousins was also there we googled the hotel and we saw it and then when we went to check it out we actually checked out a few hotels but the one we ended up staying at was the Sunset Hotel so we paid for two rooms and we were there for two nights and in total we paid 520,000 Tanzanian shillings in Dodoma we stayed at I'm not sure the name of the hotel I can't really remember at all but um, we stayed at this hotel and we paid 120,000 Tanzanian shillings for two rooms because the price for one room was more expensive than the price for the two rooms so we just decided to take two rooms in Moshi we stayed at Salinero Hotel guys Yemani that hotel is beautiful it's gorgeous if you're gonna be staying in Moshi try to stay at Salinero Hotel it is not cheap but it's not extremely expensive especially if you're Tanzanian by the way these rates are for residents in Tanzania there is this I don't know if it's a policy or it's a rule but the prices for residents is different than the prices for foreigners for some reason I believe they want to do this to encourage um, Utali Wandani what do they call it to encourage its citizens to tour their own country so I think that's the main reason but again I am not sure so these rates are for local Tanzanians if you're not Tanzania the rate might be a bit higher but it's not that high now back to the Moshi hotel that we stayed at Salinero hotel was beautiful if I have those videos I will post them somewhere in the screen the landscaping whoever did that landscaping was a genius the architecture was beautiful the staff were really really friendly and they had this really nice pool but then we didn't get time to enjoy the amenities that the hotel were offering because we got there in the evening ish and then we slept and then the next morning we had to drive to Chemka Springs and we spent the whole day in Chemka Springs we came back in the evening kind of and we got some rest and then the next day we were traveling to Magrota so we didn't get to enjoy the hotel but it was really beautiful and I believe we paid 300,000 per night and this was for three people so it was about 100,000 per person per night for the room we stayed in which was also a really gorgeous room with um, a sitting room a big big bedroom with vanity and big closets and then we also had two beds in there and we had an amazing bathroom as well for Makoroto we paid a hundred thousand per person so that ended up being four hundred thousand and um, we that was just for the accommodation and food and then for the activities we paid i believe 10,000 each person maybe 15,000 maybe 15,000 each person so in total each person basically paid 115,000 Tanzanian shillings and again this was a rate for locals and we spent one night there and then the next day we spent majority of it doing activities and then the rest of the day we were driving down to Tanga in Zanzibar we stayed at Dao Hotel 
Now Zanzibar was packed, really, really packed. There were a lot of Russians, I like to think. For some reason, they're all there, they're having a good time, they're all over the city. It's like we were in their city or in their country. So we stayed at this the hotel and the story of Zanzibar was funny. First of all, we went to Kendra Rocks because that's where we were doing the water spots. And then on the way there, as we usually do because we are last minute people, we started looking for hotels that were in Kendra Rocks or somewhere close to Nungui Beach. But then all the hotels we called were booked or did not have enough rooms for all of us. So we ended up um, getting in touch with some sort of Airbnb. We got there, we didn't like it because I guess the person didn't take some time to do some cleaning. So this time it was like 8 or something, 8 or 9 p.m. And from Kendra Rocks to Stone Town is about an hour. So eventually we decided to drive, my cousin drove from Kendra Rocks at around 9, 8 or 9. And then we had to go back to Stone Town and then find a hotel. We finally found the Dao Palace Hotel. And the first night, I believe we paid $75 for the room we're staying at. And that room had three beds. It could possibly fit six people. And then for the second night, we paid $85 for the same room we stayed at. I can't explain to you the reasons, but that's just how the pricing were. And again, as I said, this is the price for locals. For the activities, I think in total we paid $80 per person, but then that might be different. So for the jet skiing, we paid, it was $50 for the jet skiing. We paid for, we divided the price among two people. So it was $25 per person for the jet ski. And for the banana boat, it was $15. And for the Ringo, it was also $15. So in total, each person paid about $80 for the water spot activities. So yeah, those were the expenses we incurred on our trip to Tanzania. I'm planning to do this again next time I'm going to Tanzania. And this time I will have a whole different um, list of cities. I ultimately want to visit every city in Tanzania. I'm on my way, but I don't even think I'm halfway there yet. But I'm gonna get there someday, you know? Slowly, we're gonna get there. So if you have any questions, um, if you're planning to visit Tanzania, please hit me up. I can recommend a few places because I've been around. <laughs> so again, if you have any questions, let me know. Hit me up on Instagram, vintima.com, or you can just leave a comment down below, and I'll be sure to check that out and respond to it. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to keep spreading the African love or whatever kind of love you have to offer because there is no room for hate. I shall see you later. Kwaheri!